Well, guys, this is the last section from this particular question. Try to explain sunsets using a flat earth model. Now, so far, this is all that we've gotten. Word salad, ad hoc explanations with buzzwords, personal atmospheric visual limitations, refraction, diffraction, perspective, flurspective. Nothing solid to explain why, on a flat earth, the sun will go down in a predictable manner, in a certain direction, at a certain time. So let's cue up the music and let's finish this up and move on to the next subject. Because you also claim that the sun and moon perform other kinds of magic to push the air and water around, to get tides and storms and what have you. Now wait a minute, don't you also say that the sun and the moon cause Tides. No. Yes, of course, due to gravitational effects. They're very well understood and predictable. And your point is? Simply because we both claim that the sun and the moon cause tides does not put them on an equal footing. We can prove our claim. You're simply asserting silliness on your part and presenting no evidence. They are not equivalent claims. Well, also, wait a minute. Now, we don't say that the moon causes tides by gravity, at least. And one of the reasons is we don't see tides on the Great Lakes, for example. You know, again, if you're going to make a claim, you should at least do some basic research. We do have tides on the Great Lakes. They are very tiny, on the order of five centimeters. About that big. Now, there's a very good reason for that, and it goes right along with the entire gravitational cause of tides everywhere on the Earth. The fact that they are very small actually confirms the fact that our idea of what's causing the tides is correct. We would expect them to be very small, and indeed they are. You know, the next time you make an assertion, maybe you should research it a little bit. Then you won't look quite as silly as you do and have throughout this entire series. Now that's a problem for you, but again, these aren't my challenges. We, we're not, we're probably never going to get to that because that's been tried before. I mean, we, we're not even interested because that would be an exercise that we've already done. That's what we did when we, when, when I tried to debunk flat Earth. I did these things and I was not able to debunk them. I found only problems with the heliocentric model. Honestly, that has more to do with your incompetence as an experimenter and a scientist than anything else. You know, those of us that actually do know what we're doing can easily demonstrate this. I'm not going back. That'd be like, that, that, it's, that's insane. I mean, I've only found, in the real research I've done, I've only found problems with the heliocentric model. Quite frankly, that's because that's all you look for. And you will never find problems with the flat earth model because you refuse to look for them. And when it's shoved in your face, you will ignore them. I did go through several months of refusal to accept it fully. It was just an interesting, like a curious thing that I was laughing about. But the intellectual honesty remained with me even if I lost conversation partners and things like that, because the conclusions that are undeniable based on the facts are what they are. And it's a, a lot of people through various means are unwilling to even entertain the thought, much less investigate, much less answer. But I have no problem answering questions. And sometimes I don't know. Well, how about you answer the question that's put to you? Explain the sunset on the flat earth model and only on the flat earth model. It has nothing to do with the globe, the sphere, the horizon, anything like that. You explain to me why on a flat earth, the sun goes below the line where the sky meets the ground. And by the way, it's not that we simply dismiss your claims. That would be justifiable based on the amount of evidence that says your claims are silly. Those of us in the debunking community actually went in and had a look at your claims, including this one that you put up. I've seen most of the examples that you've put out, and I've already addressed them. You continue to put the same examples out. 
How many times have we heard them claim that Mount San Jacinto from Malibu, California shows the entire mountain? How many times have we shown you that it's missing 6,280 feet of that mountain and proved it to you? Yet you'll continue to talk about Mount San Jacinto as proof of a flat earth because we see too far. Now, get back, get focused. Tell me how on your non-existent flat earth model, the sun sets. Go for it. So if you try to do this thing where you say, explain the Trappist system then. Well, the Trappist system, I, you guys made that up. I don't know about that. I mean, just explain, you know, explain why the, the Sith, there's two and, and there are always two. And uh, I don't know. I mean, I didn't make that up. Did you just seriously quote Star Wars as a justification for your flat earth? Do you know the difference between fantasy and reality? Apparently not, because you're a flat earther. But that's a movie. The Sith do not exist, much less always come in pairs. They come in pairs in the Star Wars series. That's a movie. It's fantasy. Most people can tell the difference between fantasy and reality. So why don't you work on that a little bit? So, I mean, I can probably come up with something. I'm creative that way. But we're talking about science. We're not talking about, you know, storytelling. No, Chief, I'm talking about science. You're talking about Star Wars. You realize that, right? <laughs> what is science? It seems to be a lot of CGI and storytelling, if you ask me. So which is it? Is the sun outside of the magical non-existent dome so you can pretend to get the sunset? Or is it inside the magical non-existent dome? Well, with the false dichotomy you gave me, I, I can't really answer that because you're telling me it's magical non-existent. So am I going to sign up? Okay, yeah, I believe in what you said. The ma I believe in a magical non-existent. I mean, if I were like that, I would be a NASA fan because... Somebody told me that there's a Voyager 13.8 billion miles away with a 60 watt transmitter sending signals and receiving signals. So they remote started it after 37 years to retask it so that it could pick up signals. Well, how did it get the signal for the uh, liquid fuel, liquid propelled rockets to fire up after 37 years to retask, to reorient back in the slightest of angles in order to shoot the beam, the 60 watt beam, that only the NASA Deep Space Network, the, the DSN can pick up. And that is referred to as an argument from personal incredulity. He doesn't know how it happens, so therefore it's magic and didn't happen. Well, there are people who know how it happens. Did he talk to any of them? Did he do any basic research on this other than reading a headline on the internet somewhere? No or else he would have an actual answer for that and express some modicum of understanding of what's going on. You know, just to kind of give you a hint, if you've got an object out in space and you know where it is, and you have a steerable antenna on Earth, you can aim the antenna at that object and hit it and direct it to aim its antenna back at you to answer you. So, come on. Did you think through any of this stuff? But if you want to insult me, I mean, be careful. <laughs> so you can pretend to get the tides. It can't be both. Or if you bail on the dome and say it's just water. Well, to answer the previous question, I would have to reject the phrasing of it. And I would say it's inside that dome that you showed, not the personal visual dome. That's a different one, okay? If there is a dome over the entire Earth, which I believe there is, is it shaped like that? Is it is that scaled properly? Is that something that we could ever see? I don't know. Well, if you don't know, why are you asserting it as a fact? Why don't you go find out about it and then come back when you have something that you can actually present that would constitute data or confirmation or evidence? As it is now, all you're doing is just throwing crap against the wall and hoping that some of it will stick or deflect some of these very hard questions. Now, once again, please explain how the sun 
disappears at night on your flat earth model, which you don't have, but do your best. But I can say that I don't know. So that's for that. Now, what is this next one? I... How do all those water molecules that make up around 1% of the atmosphere produce a thousand times greater refractive effect than actual liquid water? Oh, he's talking about the sunset and how, okay, we've already moved on from that. No, we haven't because you haven't answered it yet. Are you going to answer how does a sunset occur on a flat earth model? Please answer the question. You know, I know you can't. So it's just to my personal amusement to poke you with this little stick. So tell me, how does a sunset occur on a flat earth model? Knock yourself out, man. So uh, yeah, I've already explained that. How does the appearance of a sunset never vary at all, whether it's dry or humid or raining? Well, it does, it does vary. When it's raining, sometimes you can't even see the sun. So the sunset does vary. You know, I thought that was really cute the way you did that. You know, clearly, if there's fog on the ground, you're not going to see the sun. I mean, that's not really the question. But if it's drizzling, if it's dry, if it's over land, if it's over water, you know, it's the same half degree in angular size. It's the same color. It disappears in a predictable spot based on the time of year. And... Uh, Quite frankly, we can predict it all. How does your flat earth model explain that? Come on, man, answer the question. Quit dancing around and coming up with this ad hoc word salad nonsense that you keep putting out. And why don't you pay attention? Why are you looking at something from an annular solar eclipse? We haven't asked you about a solar eclipse. Be nice if you explained how it happened and what's eclipsing the sun, but that's for another question. Answer the question that has been put to you. How does a sunset occur on a flat earth according to your non-existent flat earth model? Come on, man. We're pulling for you. So the sunset does vary. It varies between the northern and southern hemisphere, given equal uh, latitudes and longitudes. Uh... Oh, really? Please do tell me more. How is the sunset at 35 degrees north different than the sunset at 35 degrees south, assuming that we're at the equinox and the sun's over the equator? Tell me how the sun is different. Uh, latitudes and longitudes, uh, equivalent, equivalencies, almost nothing perfectly matches. Now, the numbers will match, but what is a sunset? What is a sunrise? Is it something you can pinpoint? No, it's, it varies based on the atmosphere. Come on, man. Did you think that we didn't notice that you put that table up? We know exactly where the sun will rise and set and at what time. So why are you going down this little rabbit hole where you suddenly seem to have forgotten all about it? Come on. Any weatherman who's been through his meteorological training, uh, basic meteorology will tell you that. I mean, uh, yeah, it, it varies. Yeah, it does. Why does nothing else but the sun behave that way? Show me a projectile or a plane going below the horizon as it recedes. <laughs> Dude, we've tried. You can't. There is, it's not. That, that's, the horizon isn't like a curve like that. It's a vanishing point. It's a line that goes across perfectly straight and flat. I mean, come on. Listen, listen. Or show me this dome and explain the phenomena with more than buzzwords. Do something to explain a sunset. Do anything besides making idiotic videos with action movie soundtracks that contradict middle school level science. Okay, done. Well guys, thank you very much for stopping by. The first efforts of the Flat Earth to explain the sunset was a cacophony of word salad and buzzwords, personal atmospheric visual range, atmospheric obstruction, which only affects the bottom part of objects, but not the top part of objects, diffraction, which they have no understanding of whatsoever, 
and basically a hodgepodge of excuses as to why atmospheric effects will cause the sun to appear to set below the horizon every night and rise the next morning on the opposite side of the earth. So this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Make sure you hit that little like and subscribe button down there. And thank you very much for stopping by. And by the way, Flat Earth, explain to me why that sun pillar is lighting up the bottom side of the clouds at sunset. You can clearly see the sun on the horizon. You can clearly see the redness and the underlighting of the clouds. How's that work out? Take care, guys.